Sampling a tiger population in a vast forest using camera traps requires a good camera trap survey design. There are four main points to remember. Point number one. The camera traps must not be placed randomly in the habitat, but must be carefully positioned at spots that are most likely to be visited by tigers. This requires field craft and knowledge of tiger behavior. Skilled trackers can be very helpful in detecting areas with good tiger movement. Within their territories, tigers walk on well-established trails. They often visit areas where there are salt licks or water holes that attract prey animals. Tigers also love to walk on man-made roads in the forest. If camera traps are intelligently placed on trails and roads used by tigers, the chances of photo-trapping tigers will be greatly improved. Point number two. The placement of cameras must be designed in such a way that every tiger in the area has a good chance of being photographed. Point number three. The goal should be to catch as many individuals as possible in each sample and to recapture as many of the same tigers as possible in subsequent samples. In order to ensure this, a large number of camera traps should be spread out sufficiently and in numerous locations. It is not enough to use just a few pairs of camera traps. Point number four. For the results to be meaningful, camera trapping should only be conducted for a relatively short duration, say 30 to 60 days or so. To understand why, please refer to chapters 11 and 12 of the manual. Before undertaking camera trapping in an unfamiliar area, it is necessary to first do a survey to identify the best locations to set up cameras. Good trap sites can be a place where several game trails converge, a trail leading to a water hole or a kill, an area where tiger signs are evident such as pug marks, scats, scrape marks or scratch marks on trees. Camera trapping is best done during the driest season of the year when logistics are easy and cameras can stay dry. Where cameras need to be protected from rain, elephants or thieves, a secure metal housing is ideal. There are many types of camera traps available and one must use the most appropriate one for a particular situation and to suit one's budget. The camera trapping schedule should be arranged in such a way that all cameras are set up and checked as frequently as possible. To make identification certain, all camera traps must have two cameras to photograph both sides of the tiger. Care should be taken to position the cameras properly and the cameras should be tested regularly to make sure they work. The lens should be kept clean to get clear pictures. Meticulous record keeping is a must for successful camera trapping surveys. It is of utmost importance that relevant data is recorded on the photographs and that the two photographs taken from either side are linked together as the same tiger. The location of the camera trap should be clearly recorded in data forms. Proper camera trap data sheets must be used to record all the information. Film canisters or digital photos must be clearly numbered so that each photo can be specifically linked to a location and date of capture. The negatives should be checked thoroughly to ensure that no roll goes unprocessed and no frame goes unprinted. When identifying tigers from photos, use the same body portion and compare it to all earlier tigers in long-term studies. For more details on the concept and practice of camera trapping, please refer to chapters 11, 12 and 13 of the manual 
Monitoring Tigers and Their Prey by K. Ullas Karant and James D. Nichols.